plane flies overhead. And the noise from its engines leads away. It's around 5.40 in the evening. Halloween night. There are a couple things of interest to talk about today. I have just today reached just over 500,000 impressions on my YouTube channel if we were to think of YouTube as a TV program then we would say that a YouTube impression is the same as seeing a commercial for a product and a view is someone going out and buying that product. For YouTube to feel your content is important enough to essentially show off in a commercial is pretty nice because ultimately that's how views are then generated if your channel gets traffic then views follow so 500,000 impressions is a nice number it also means that I gained a hundred thousand impressions since I've been back from Florida essentially I have gained somewhere in the neighborhood of 300,000 impressions a little more than that in the last four months That's some good growth. There is some philosophy I can talk about today. 
to something that may be of interest to some people. I have noticed that in terms of my interest, philosophically, I am very interested in exploring human nature. I think that is perhaps the most interesting aspect of philosophy. And it makes sense given that we live our entire lives surrounded by the things humans create. Whether through concrete physical creations or the ideas that exist in their brains. One of the interesting ideas to think about is the relationship between a lie or a lying and its role in the generation of sound knowledge. As a squirrel sits on that fallen tree for just a second before running off. Now, one might think that lying cannot generate sound knowledge. They might think that these two ideas are in opposition of one another. If you think deeply about this, however, you can envision a scenario in which Someone tells a lie that is so hard to believe, that is so out of the realm of possibility, that that lie causes someone who is not knowledgeable about a topic to then question that idea. Now, one might say, well, why is this special? This happens all the time. Lying and the almost absurd nature in which a lie can be told can 
surf to spark an interest in an otherwise uninterested person. Telling a lie that is egregious can open the door in someone's mind to a whole new world of possibilities. Now, this is unnecessary. to a curious person. But if we take the belief that I have that most people are uncurious about the world and In being an uncurious person, have little interest in the generation of ideas. We can see how lying to such a person could actually serve a benefit to them insofar as that lie provokes an interest in that person. A dormant interest the person didn't even know they could possibly have this is perhaps the only noble use of a lie. In a way, an over-the-top lie may serve to illuminate an otherwise shut off mind. It's interesting to me how you can take two Contrasting ideas in this example, lying and truth and knowledge, and find some connection between those ideas. If someone gains the curiosity to
educate themselves on the soundness of a lie, then that person is engaging in the process of understanding, the process of gaining knowledge, and the process of becoming enlightened. This guy is so gray. It'd be interesting to see if you were able to live 500 years, how much the conception of knowledge and truth would change in your lifetime. As society continues to change. For example, I can make the case right now that our senses are the best window into understanding the world around us. However, if there does come a time in the future where it is more understandable to people that our senses are, let's say, grossly inaccurate 40% of the time. Then I wouldn't be able to make the argument that our senses give us the best appreciation for interpreting the world around us. And although I do not foresee a future time in which we come to this belief. That is not to say that such a time or such an occurrence will never happen or is impossible. It's possible that everything in life is temporal in nature. If we come to a time where we have so shaken the underpinnings of our trust in our senses. I do not see where humanity goes from there. We would have to say something like knowledge is wholly temporal. 
that everything we believed was only truthful in the past. That is a unsatisfying thought. I would like to think that although everything does have a truth gradient, which is dependent on time, I would like to think that some truths are more well-rooted in truly representing reality and therefore less subject to deterioration throughout time. But perhaps that is just my wishful thinking. And as the saying goes, time makes fools of us all. That's going to be the end of the video because it is getting dark. I will leave you with some gray sky and some bare trees as almost all the leaves have fully fallen off all the trees.